Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. My name is Michael Donahue, and I'm a seasonal ranger here at the battlefield. I've been here for 31 summers, and I'm also an art professor. And uh, we're going to do a second installment on some of the last stand art. It's called Death on a Hillside, the Anatomy of a, an American uh, Myth. And uh, we're going to take a look at another artwork today. But before we do that, uh, I want to talk about purpose of art. I think purpose is extremely important especially when we're dealing with some of these last stand images. So uh, we're going to take a look at some of the purposes that people, uh, there's a reason why people make art. And uh, let's talk about some of the categories that these artworks that we look at fall into. Uh, of course, we know that some people make functional art. Uh, they'll make a vase or a quilt or a blanket, and they'll make it in a beautiful way, uh, so beautiful that we consider that art. Uh, Self-expression is pretty important to artists, and many artists rely on their own view of the world. Uh, for instance, Picasso, when he painted uh, his lovers or beautiful women, uh, he would express certain ideas about those women that he knew and loved. Uh, advertising is also considered art, or art can be advertising. Uh, if you look at the logo of Apple, for instance, it's known around the world, you don't have to speak English to understand that logo, and that's also a type of art. Uh, protest art is extremely important right now. Everybody is probably familiar with the Black Lives Matter protest and also the uh, murals uh, made of George Floyd. Uh, those have been around the country. We would consider that a type of art, protest art. Uh, ritual art, uh, we have different uh, civilizations, the Mayans, uh, they made a, a sun god called Chakmul, and they would actually do human sacrifices uh, to Chakmul. And, uh, and then, of course, we have different memorial art, whether it's the Washington Memorial or the Lincoln Memorial or even the controversial Confederate memorials right now. While many people don't like the symbolism of those pieces, they are still considered art. Uh, sometimes art tells stories. And I think that's the case here at Little Bighorn. I think many of the pieces we're going to talk about fall into the category of being a narrative or their storytelling. And then the, the last type or another purpose that we have of art is, of course, propaganda. When you look at the Nazis and the art they made in World War II, uh, showing the Aryan race is superior, uh, that's a, a good example. Even the Americans use propaganda in their World War II advertisement and art. So again, these are some of the purposes. And by the way, many times uh, these categories overlap. They don't have to be all one category or another, and sometimes there is overlap. Today we're going to talk about an artist by the name of Alfred R. Wode. And uh, he was a London-based illustrator, born in London, but he came to America. And the particular piece we're looking at today is called Custer's Last Fight, done in 1876. It is an engraving. And uh, what's fascinating about this piece and what makes it special is that this is the first book illustration made of Custer's Last Stand. Uh, you have basically, uh, this was done for Fred Whitaker's book, A Complete Life of General George Armstrong Custer, done in 1876, a book that was rushed into publication. Uh, what is unique about uh, Wode is that he actually knew George Armstrong Custer. Uh, he was very famous for uh, working for the Harper's Weekly newspaper as an illustrator during the Civil War. And you see many different illustrations that he did of George Custer during his time as a, a brevet brigadier general in the Civil War. Uh, Wode also did the illustrations for Custer's own book that was published in his lifetime called My Life on the Plains. The Library of Congress uh, recognized Wode as one of the most important illustrators uh, of American history during this period. Uh, in this composition, you see George Armstrong Custer's center. He's the focal point uh, in his buckskin suit with a revolver in his right hand, and he's holding a rifle in his left. Uh, his hair is fairly long, and he's surrounded by some very dark soldiers in dark uniforms. And, of course, this is for contrast. Uh, the illustrator wants you to look at Custer uh, being light up against the dark. And something else compositionally that's interesting, 
Triangles always give a, a painting or an engraving a sense of dramatic motion anytime you use diagonals. And so if you look carefully, uh, the illustrator here in this piece has made a triangle with Custer at the apex of that triangle. Uh, he didn't know much about the landscape, so he just basically gets rid of all the landscape here. And of course you see that Custer uh, in his stance here is fighting to the death and you see all the warriors, uh, massive warriors coming up behind him, uh, soon to envelop this small group of soldiers. Fascinating, off to the left, you see a warrior who has captured a Guidon. Uh, Guidons in the battle were used to show where different companies were on the battlefield. And each company, there were five of them with Custer down on this end of the fight, each company had one of those Guidons to show you where the company commander was. It was basically kind of a signaling or location device. And during this period, it was an American flag, kind of a swallowtail flag, and it had 35 stars on it. And in this particular case, the warrior has this guide on riding off to the uh, riding off to the uh, uh, to the left to the left of the composition. And uh, the problem with this is is that uh, it's it's kind of a symbol of victory is what it really is in this particular uh, image. Uh, a couple of mistakes that are made here. Uh, Custer didn't have long hair. It was hot. He didn't have a buckskin suit on. The revolver he's using is probably uh, not correct. And the guide on that you see carried by the warrior does not have 35 stars. Uh, this and the genre we talked about last time is, again, an example of the hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, between the warriors and the soldiers. And this is not only a narrative piece, but it's also a propaganda piece. Uh, and I think this one and the first one we talked about are both propaganda pieces. Again, showing the heroic soldiers fighting to the end, to the death, uh, soon to be overwhelmed by huge numbers of warriors. And uh, the heroic Custer's fighting against all odds. Uh, again, we don't know when exactly he was killed in the battle, but again, this is a kind of a myth created by these early illustr illustrators. Again, we appreciate you for joining us for this second uh, second installment of uh, Death on a Hillside. Uh, we appreciate your comments and have a great day.